primarily privacy overlay is one of the largest features that we have. Um, a large request primarily from Europe with GDPR compliance for privacy regulations um, and the requirement to have some, some way to anonymize or uh, make sure that people aren't identifiable in everyday footage. So Mike, we're going to take a little quick demo of the uh, BVMS 12 version and some of the features that are introduced in that, in that new rev. Uh, can you kind of walk us through some of the key things that are introduced now? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Brad. BVMS 12 is actually going to go public on the 31st of March, so just in a few days here. It'll be available on the download store. If you have an active SMA with us, you can absolutely upgrade your software to the latest version. We've got a number of uh, features that are available as well. Primarily privacy overlay is one of the largest features that we have. Um, a large request primarily from Europe with GDPR compliance for privacy regulations. Um, and the requirement to have some, some way to anonymize or uh, make sure that people aren't identifiable in everyday footage. Now that's not to say that we're doing that for the recordings though, because all of the recordings are the way that they are. They're standard, so you'd be able to access that without the overlay. Here in the top left camera, we can see that we have privacy overlay enabled. Even Matt, who's behind the camera, is still picking up a little bit of that indicator. You can see that Tom back there has already uh, got the overlay on him as well. What you can do is you can set this up per camera and by user rights as well. So if a particular operator should always have access to look behind the overlay, they can absolutely be set up like that. If a specific user shouldn't be able to identify certain people, but if somebody walks by or in an area they shouldn't be, they can still identify that as a person and they can track them, but not necessarily identify who that person is in their specific operator capacity. They're able to do that. Past privacy overlay. What we've got also is threat level management. What I've done here is I've actually configured a switch within BVMS that's going to trigger the privacy overlay. So as we walk into threat management, let's talk about that. Threat management lets us take user permissions and switch them in an event that may happen. So let me give you the example of there's a detention facility and the everyday operator may have access to, it, uh, to that area, but maybe the privacy overlay is on there or the everyday operator doesn't have access to that detection facility. Maybe they're in a more civilian area, and in the event of a fire, they need to get access to those cameras in there. Anything you can define with user rights can be set up for a dynamic switch. So with threat level management, I've got it set up for a user alarm. We can go ahead and toggle this event here. There's gonna be a quick reload of the operator client making that user switch. In for, uh, future versions of BVMS, we're hoping to make this more of a dynamic thing, but we can see here that the threat level's been changed. It's down for mere seconds and it pops up, repopulating our same cameras that we had in the tree, and now we have access to what's behind the footage. Privacy overlay, by the way, can also be toggled on or off by export, so you can force that on, force that off. It's, it's very flexible. But ultimately, threat level management is as good as you can program it to be. If you can think of a particular switch that should happen with user permissions, you can make that happen upon that event. Moving from that, we actually have some updates to the Favorites tab. I know one of the requests that uh, we've had for quite a while is the ability to share Favorites with other users. So right here I have a group of Favorites perimeter northwest. Say I've got a brand new operator coming on with brand new credentials. Rather than them having to drag all of these cameras and create the Favorites themselves, I can go ahead and just uh, right click and export my Favorites to a local database. They're able to send that over via email, put it on a flash drive, etc., and then upload it into their version of BVMS and their operator client and save that for themselves. And the import is right there as well. Not only can we do favorites, but we can also do bookmarks. So if there's a specific recording or a point of interest in the past that you want to share with somebody, you can absolutely do that. Now, if you have an export of a, of a piece of video that's part of an incident report, you can also include the bookmark as part of that full incident report now as well by simply exporting it. And it's done following the same process. Ex uh, export bookmark, save it local, you can send it wherever you need to or put it on a flash drive, and then we can import it as well. Finally, a, a last feature that we've got here to talk to you about and share is more of an administrator level. Over here in configuration client, under tools, we now have workstation monitor. That's going to show us what workstations are connected, the network address of them, the station user that's using them, 
uh, the version that they're running, etc. So if we have a station that's gone rogue and it's been left on, we can go ahead and close that out so it's not consuming one of our licenses. Also, in the event that there's a workstation takeover, as unfortunate as that is, we can kick that person off. When we kick them off, we can go and disable that user permanently as well, so they can't log back on if they have those credentials. So that's what we've got for BVMS 12. Again, it goes live on March 31st, and it'll be up on the Bosch Download Store. Sounds great, Mike. And I think there's a lot of key things that are introduced here, and, and this especially, I mean, I know, I know for our customers, I mean, this is huge to be able to see who's out there and who's connected, what version they are, where they're sitting, basically by your IP address, who's logged in. That's all huge information. Um, exporting favorites. I have a new user coming into the system. I don't, you know, and they're part of third shift or second shift, and we already have that, you know, broken out. We can simply export it from one of the other users that are seasoned already and, and stick it right into the, for the new user profile. So sounds good, Mike. Um, I really appreciate you walking us through that and uh, hope you have a great show. Thank you, sir. Thanks.